Okay, so we're going, we're going to, to go through neonatal resuscitation. We've done neonatal resuscitation in the classroom and now we're going to go through the practical aspects. So the baby was, was born, there was no signs of breathing. What would we normally do under those circumstances? We'd try and stimulate the baby, give it a rub with the towel, change the towel so that he doesn't get cold and he's dry. Um, and then we would bring him over to the resuscitator okay. and put him in the neutral position. We would, yes. So we brought the baby over to the resuscitator. He's got a, a nice warm towel. He's under direct vision. There's a heater to keep him warm. We've started the, the machine. The clock is ticking. And we've placed the baby in the neutral position. What can you tell me about the neutral position? Um, it basically makes sure that the baby's airways are open um, and the head is in a position that allows the airways to be fully open. Okay. So how do we know when we've got a baby in the neutral position? Um, the nose will reach to the ceiling and we can give infe uh, effective inflation breath. Okay. So we've got the nose to the ceiling, we've got a, a, a towel possibly under the neck to support the head to stop it from moving out of position and in this position we would then assess the baby. So what would we want to assess the baby for? We would need to see whether he was breathing on his own. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's no signs of breathing at the moment. The baby's been placed in the neutral position. What are we going to do next? We need to check the heart rate of the baby. Okay, so the heart rate is about 110 at the moment. There's still no signs of breathing. Uh, inflation breaths. So we need to give five inflation breaths. Okay, so we'll, we'll get ready to do five inflation breaths. So we've got a bag and mask here. We could use a bag and mask. And what would be important about how we position the bag and the mask? We need to make sure that the nose and mouth are fully covered and that no air can escape around the edge. Okay. And what is special about five inflation breaths? How do they differ from other breaths, other ventilations? They're longer. They give them over few seconds rather than being short breaths. Okay, and what do they do? What do inflation breaths do? They, they squeeze the um, fluid out of the lungs. Uh -huh. Basically, and fill the lungs with air. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the five inflation breaths now. So yes, they're given over two to three seconds and they're given at 20 to 30 centimetres of pressure. And you squeeze the bag and you count What do you observe for when you're doing this? Chest wall rising. Okay, so you observe the chest wall rising. So we would give the five inflation breaths. We would observe for the chest wall rising. We didn't see the chest wall rise. We consider adjusting the baby's position. Um, in order to try and get those effective five inflation breaths in and we would repeat the five inflation breaths. Okay, so we've delivered the second round of five inflation breaths. Uh, we did see the chest wall rise this time, but the baby's still not breathing independently. So what other information do we need in order to be able to proceed with the resuscitation of this baby? What do we need to know? We need to know what the heart rate is and whether it's rising or falling. Okay, so we need to know what the heart rate is. Uh, what, at what rate would we be alarmed if the heart rate was at a particular rate and how, how would we know whether to continue with ventilations or whether we would need advanced resuscitation. If it was 60 and falling, we'd be alarmed. Okay. If it was rising, we'd observe and check that it carried on rising. So we've got a baby that isn't breathing independently and the ba we've got a baby with a heart rate of 60. What would, we, what would we do under those circumstances? We'd give ventilation breaths. Okay, and what about the heart rate? Are we concerned about a heart rate of 60? Yes. Yes, okay. So what are we going to do when we've got a heart rate of 60? Give CPR. 
Okay, we're going to do some CPR. Okay. Give them five inflation breaths. Okay. We didn't see the chest wall rise on application. We've repeated the five inflation breaths. We've seen the chest wall rise. We've reassessed the baby. The heart rate has been found to be 60 beats a minute. And the baby still isn't breathing independently. So what is our next step? Um, we then go into chest compressions. Okay, so show me how you would do chest compressions. Okay, I'd lock my fingers around the back of the baby um, and I'd place my thumbs just below, yeah, just about there. And I need to press about the third of the depth of the chest. Okay, okay um, we're going to do three chest compressions to one breath. Okay. So it would be something, and we're trying to mimic how it would normally happen. So we do. breath and repeat and how long do we do this for and um, we check reassess the baby after 30 seconds Okay, so we we would check the baby after 30 seconds and on checking the baby, the heart rate has risen, the heart rate is now 100, uh, the baby's still not breathing independently though, so what will we do under those circumstances? Now we give the ventilation breaths. Yeah, we give the ventilation breaths, okay, and, and what's different about ventilation breaths? Because we talked about inflation breaths. These are much shorter. Um, they're mimicking the baby's normal pattern of breathing. So how many of those would we do? 35 to 40 in a minute. Okay. When would we reassess? After 30, 30 seconds. seconds. So we did 30 seconds of ventilation, so we reassessed, we can see that the baby is breathing independently, the heart rate is 110, and the baby's colour is, is improving. What, what, what would we do? We'd observe and provided that he carries on breathing and his heart rate rises, we'd wrap him and give him back to mum. Okay, so yes, that's what we would do. If, if, for instance, we had a situation where on reassessment the heart rate had fallen further and the baby was still not breathing independently, hopefully by that time other support had arrived in the form of a paediatrician, what might the paediatrician wish to do? They might administer drugs mm -hmm. to get the baby going. So they might give um, adrenaline or sodium bicarbonate or dextrose. Mm -hmm, that's right.